Renaming people and places. Replace African names with Arabic and European names. This will disguise their true black identity. CT scan has one more surprise for Alejandro. Shamai's ethnicity. Examining Shamai's anatomy closely, the thickness of his bone and the shape of his nasal cavity, the anthropologists think he was a black African, likely from neighboring Nubia. Well, they have just told me that uh, Shamai had a Nubian feature, which means that um, their ruling family was probably Nubian and th that was unexpected. As the African servant, the content that I'm about to use on this clip is, has been borrowed from the Home Team History channel. It is a channel that talks mainly about African historical heritage that is hard to come by. So if you're interested in the channel, you can go and visit their YouTube page and probably watch some of their clips and even subscribe. Thank you. Today, we're going to be taking a closer look at the Kalenjin people. The name Kalenjin for both the people and their language was adopted in the 1940s and reportedly means, I tell you. The Kipsigi and the Nandi are the two largest subgroups of the Kalenjin people. The Kalenjin are estimated to number around 5 million people today, making them the fourth largest ethnic group in Kenya. And they're said to have originated around the northern tip of Lake Turkana in Kenya. The oral history of the Kalenjin is indeed filled with many wonders. Some of the oral history agrees with modern historical analysis, but it has some additions. The most popular oral account says that the Kalenjin homeland is a place north of Kenya they called Amatad Borgay, which they say means the hot country. Some have speculated that this country could be modern day Sudan or Egypt. The Kalenjin claim that from there they moved southward along the Nile, settling in modern day Kenya. What's even more interesting in my opinion is that some Kalenjin elders give us very detailed information as to why they left Egypt. The elders claim that they left because they were attacked by a mysterious people they called Kepeyaya Munkin. They say it was during the reign of a pharaoh they called Kipchium. Some suggest that this event occurred around the same time of the Persian invasion of Egypt in 525 BC. This oral history is very specific and I personally find it fascinating. Even though I can't really confirm the validity of this particular oral account, there are many who subscribe to it. According to modern day historical accounts, the Kalenjin began moving south from their homeland along the eastern side around 500 BC, which again is in alignment with the Persian invasion of Egypt. They introduced a new form of age sets and expanded the so-called warrior period, which gave the Kalenjin a reputation for military strength. Age sets or age grades are a way of organizing society in many African cultures. They usually start with a form of coming of age ceremony, which for boys can involve circumcision. All boys or girls born within the span of several years go through the ceremonies together and subsequently go through all stages of life together. Age sets are a way of solidifying the group as a whole by providing an alternate to family ties. Age sets cross cut kinship lines and frequently form a stronger basis for relationships than kinship. In Southern Africa, age sets served as the basis for military regiments organized by the Zulu. The Kalenjin and other Nilites during their migration south modified their age sets, reducing the total number from eight to two important stages. Both boys and girls are children until around age 15. The boys are brought together, circumcised, and after a period of healing, become Muren or warriors. The warriors mark their status with elaborate beadwork and wear their hair long, braided or twisted, and smeared with red clay. They stay in the warrior stage for around 15 to 20 years before they go through the next stage of life ceremony. The Kalenjin, like many other Nilotic people, were heavily involved with cattle as a way of life. Among the hunter-gatherer populations they absorbed are the Okik who began making a type of pottery named after them, which was traded in much of East Africa. 
The Bantu expansion was a huge event that displaced many groups of people as they conquered much territory. After the Bantu population arrived in East Africa, however, they were not able to dislodge the Kalenjin people. Around 700, Bantu cultivators added crops such as banana that were able to be grown in the highland areas, challenging Kushite control. The Kalenjin were able to resist Bantu challenges and, in general, the Bantu moved around them. Most Kalenjin today claim that they're either Christian or Muslims, but their traditional religion plays a significant role in their lives. Their traditional religion is monotheistic and has a powerful god or goddess called Asis, who is associated with the sun. The word Asis means both God and Son, and some have given more weight to Kalenjin claims of Egyptian origin based on the similarities between Asis and the Egyptian god Isis or Aset. Prayers to Asis are given before sunrise. Under Asis is Alat, who, though not a god, controls thunder and lightning. In addition, there are the Oyik or spirits of the dead who can interfere with human life. There are also diviners or Orkhoik who can contact the spirits and find out what they want and what needs to be done to set things right, often in the form of an offering of meat or beer.
Vamos lá! <risos>